Hello, everybody. My name is Eric, and today we've got a totally shocking announcement that is fitting for the start of a quarter. But first, a message from our very serious and important sponsor. This video is sponsored by Hustlers University, the number one online education platform that will help you today stop being a brokey and escape the matrix. Click the link in the description below to get started with your free trial of Hustlers University. So I did want to add one other thing that in our Discord we are introducing uh, a new section on Roblox hacking. I know this has been a highly re requested subject, uh, so we will now be providing educational content. Now back to the main video. <laughs> okay, it's April 1st. I hope everyone knew that was a joke, but I don't think I've ever addressed the comments of people saying that I sound like them. So, I mean, I don't know how to address that, but uh, it, there we go. Uh, I was kind of torn uh, between doing that or doing like a tech lead, I quit security. This is now a skibbity toilet theory channel. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe we should do that next year. You can tell me which one you actually think was the better idea. Uh, but for now, we're going to be talking about something that's kind of hilarious. So OpenAI, uh, sometimes colloquially referred to as closed AI. And look, I have no hate for OpenAI as a company. But I, I do think it is the wrong name for what they do as a company. OpenAI is a company that has not open sourced an AI model since GPT-2 in 2019. That was a model that couldn't write a coherent sentence. And they claimed the reason for this was over safety because they couldn't really control the model. Well, they've decided uh, to turn that around, which I think is interesting. Now, interestingly, much as it is AI parlance to refer to an open weight model as open source, OpenAI is not actually go making that claim. OpenAI is referring to this as an open weight model, which is technically correct. Right. The thing that you can download, and there's plenty of these about, right? We can go to Hugging Face, which is the main source for open weight models. And we can uh, search for these. And I mean, these are the popular ones. Uh, the best open source model right now is DeepSeek. But it requires a computer that would cost half a million dollars to run on a GPU and still about 10 grand to run on a CPU. I tried it on my Threadripper with 512 gigabytes of RAM, and I couldn't even get it to run. So... Very intensive model. So there's also smaller models. Uh, and we've got these. And if you note, right, the thing, because unlike, uh, oh, I don't know what I did there. Uh, unlike uh, programs, right, there's no source code because these things are not, uh, the equivalent is really more akin to shareware, where you can download a program for your computer and execute it. And similarly, these are model weights, which is ultimately just a massive collection of floating point numbers. If you ever open these up in a hex editor, you'll first of all see a JSON file that contains some metadata that shows what the model is, and then just a bunch of uh, floats, which are stored in binary format. Uh, and in this case, uh, you've got in total almost 700 billion 8-bit floats. A float is just a number with a decimal, basically. Of course, low bit count floats don't get that big or small. And if you multiply these the right way uh, with tokens, uh, I, I'm not a total expert on this, you do get um, an output from it. And that's how all of these systems work. So OpenAI is finally going to release the weights of a model. A while ago, there was a tweet where he asked in a poll, uh, would you prefer for OpenAI's next open source project that the model be phone sized? Or would you prefer something that would need GPUs be on par with O3 Mini, which is Basically, until now, I mean, depending on what you're interested in, we can actually use it. Uh, it's basically their top tier model. I, I imagine they're going to release uh, something better before that. I mean, I guess you could say if you have the Pro plan, you could say O1 Pro is better, but it it's slow. Uh, and on the API, it is unimaginably expensive, whereas this one is quite practical. Uh, you can use it for pretty much anything. Yeah, let's see if we can do that. Actually, this is one I like to test. Uh, uh, whenever I like to test them on Rust, I always like to do, uh, it's pretty, this is a good model. I always like to see uh, with Rust if they can do a very simple algorithm that's hard to implement in Rust, because uh, that gives you a good idea. So open weights is just, uh, yeah, in practice, there's not really open source models because A, I don't even know about the legality because while it might be legal to train on copyrighted data, it's almost certainly not legal to mass reproduce that copyrighted data and just share a terabyte of copyrighted content 
Uh, that would be one problem with that. And the other is just it would be a, a, an erosion of competitive advantage. So what they're actually going to do uh, is simply uh, release the weights. So let's go and see. They're actually looking for feedback. It's kind of cool what their homepage is. And here you can actually put in your information and tell them uh, if you want to go and attend events where they're going to demo their open language model, which they say will have reasoning, uh, you can actually do that. I don't know if they'll do anything uh, near where I am, but maybe I, I would definitely go if I was given the opportunity, even if I had to fly there, honestly. I think this would be cool. Just see it. And it's also worth noting when we go to when we go to Sam's announcement, it is interesting, and of course it makes sense, that what they're really interested in here is not the hobbyists uh, building a digital waifu, although they go on to say they're not going to stop you, uh, but they're really interested in this. And I think that is the ultimate reason why they're doing this is inevitably when you use a closed source API-based solution, which is on the cloud, right? Every time you send something, and somebody talked about this with the Ghibli trend, right? Every time you send something to ChatGPT or any of its competitors, your data is going to open AI. And while they do agree that they will not train on that data unless you give them permission to, you're trusting them. This is a trust me bro situation. And inevitably, that data is going to be in their database for some time. I think it's 30 days unless you get a no, uh, a no retention thing. So if you're in some businesses like healthcare or cybersecurity, that might be totally unacceptable to be putting customer data onto their cloud and hoping that they won't do anything wrong with it or get hacked. So I think that's really what they're looking for. And if I was in charge of OpenAI, what I would be looking to do right now is I would sell an open AI, you know, like how NVIDIA has a DGX. I would say, we will sell an open AI, AI box all on site, put a ridiculous markup on it, and say, this will uh, be your local AI, doesn't, doesn't leave to the cloud, doesn't need internet. That's how I would do it. This is a good development. I think it is better, especially given, and look, I, I don't have any issue with people training on anything that I own, but I, I do think in the spirit of that, it is good to share the model. I don't have an issue with the API. And my reasoning for that is in practice, and I this is ultimately one of the reasons why OpenAI made the decisions they did, and so did other companies. In addition to worries about fine tuning, which they do call out, where potentially if you have an open weight model, you could fine tune away the safety features. But I, th I think that's irrelevant now because DeepSeek and every other AI company, th there's enough good open source models that fundamentally OpenAI sitting this one out isn't going to stop it. But the other issue is just, as I said, as an individual user, even buying the expensive $200 a month ChatGPT plan or the quite permissive $20 a month Gemini plan is just a better deal unless you have some need. Uh, because the type of computer you would, you're would probably going to need to run this, he hasn't said, but I imagine it's going to be many enterprise graphics cards. Maybe if you're lucky, 83090s. It's just we're, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, and the reality is not that many people are, are going to spend that. So I support it, but I also think it's not necessarily wrong to release these things as an API. Just sort of interesting uh, after DeepSeek seeing a bit of a pivot here. I think, I think that is the reason, is ultimately DeepSeek is already available from so many different providers, and people are. Enterprises are using it. I even had someone in my Discord who was talking about an enterprise AI deployment. And they were saying that they're thinking about, you know, should they just do an on-prem DeepSeek deployment because then they don't have to worry about their data. Yeah, I agree with that. And that gets to something I think just finishes off, which people ask me about. And there is nuance here, which I'm going to get into. Can downloading an open source AI model put you at risk? First of all, first order of business with this. Make sure you're downloading something that's actually what you think it is. All the malware so far that has been seen in the wild has not been in the models, but in the software that goes with them. Like there was that terrible thing with Comfy UI a few months back. That's an image generation software. Someone released a malicious extension. That's one instance I've seen. Fake programs in general. I mean, someone could just ship an EXE and say that it's open AI. Uh, don't fall for that. So those are risks, but in theory, some of these models, because there are different ways these can be distributed. The most dangerous way to distribute a model is something called a pickle. It's the default way with the PyTorch machine learning library. Now, pickles on Python work in such a way that there is a code execution risk, because what you're ultimately downloading isn't just 
numbers. It's a Python data structure. So that's why that's considered dangerous. Now, if you, I believe there's a state dict, which is perfectly safe. And what I'm going to recommend and what you pr in practice see, if you're actually going to download AI models, is something called a safe tensor. That system is designed in such a way, and it's by Hugging Face, which is the biggest open source AI community. Safe Tensors is designed to have no code execution risk, no malware risk. It's just all, uh, it's a good um, system. Here's sort of, they explain the format. The format is open source, and pretty much anyone who actually wants to release something to the machine learning community is going to do it with a format like this. If you see a, a pickle format from a reputable company on their official thing, it's not been hacked, it's been there a while, fine, okay. I would not be downloading those from the community. The other things you'll see are GIGAF, I think that's how you say it, and uh, XL2 and a few others. These are all fine as well. They're just simply what they call quantized, which is a method of basically, it makes the model use less memory. Uh, it's kind of complicated math-wise how it works. That's all good as well. No real malware risk there. Just don't be downloading EXEs or pickles that say they're uh, popular AI models uh, or unreleased things. That's how you can get into trouble. So that's going to be all for this video. A bit different, just adding some other content. It's going to be all for me for now. Please do leave a comment and a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Also, let me know in the comments uh, what you thought about uh, the spoof at the beginning of the video. Bye.